Isaiah 53, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Speaking of Christ, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was what? It was our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he what? Opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare to his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge and shall the righteous servants justify many for he shall what bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressor. Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, Many of us have heard and read, and maybe some of these scriptures you've heard more than others. But the one that the Bible declares that he was wounded for our transgressions. I want you to think about that for a moment. The whole purpose of Jesus Christ coming down upon this earth, born of a virgin. He knew his purpose. The Bible says he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. The Bible declares that he was wounded. He was bruised. He was torn. He was beaten. All that they did to him, the scourgings, the beating, all that they did to him was because of us. The Bible declares, brothers and sisters, that our Lord Jesus Christ came. And in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us. This is a picture in Isaiah 53 of what sin does. How many of us know sin is nothing to be brought into words of good can come out of it. Or we look at sin and say, oh, well, they're going to be blessed. They're going to be... Listen, we look at Hollywood. We look at the world. We look at those that are prospering. They have great wealth. They live in a world of sin. And they may be prospering in the natural realm. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that there is nothing that comes good out of sin. Because the wages of sin is death. So don't think somebody's getting by just because they look like they're prospering in this world. Let's be honest, we look at the wealth of this world and the lives of those 
that are the entertainers and those that are the businessmen and people that do not acknowledge God. And I can tell you, brothers and sisters, all of that one day is going to be burnt up. We need to recognize that though we may be poor in the eyes of the world, we are really rich. Because it's the blessings of the Lord that make us rich it's not money that makes you rich it's not your job that makes you rich it's not your investments that make you rich i said it's the blessings of the lord that make us rich and they add no sorrow can i tell you when god decides to bless you it's because let me tell you he's had his eyes upon you when you've been going through temptation when you've been going through some struggles when you've been going through some hard times we've all been down the paths of heartache and pain and suffering but can i tell you it's only for a season glory be to god that's what jesus came to do he came to die but he knew that a man when they came to him at different times throughout his ministry he said it's not my time yet I've got things to fulfill here up on the earth. Jesus Christ came down with a purpose and that was to destroy the works of the devil. That's what his ministry was all about. Isaiah the prophet recognized and seen this way before Jesus Christ ever was here upon the earth. And the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Can I tell you that everything that God does is for us? And if you can only grasp that in your heart and in your spirit, that before the foundations of the world, before things ever were, He already knew you. He knew who you were. Amen. The Bible says, the prophet said that He knew me before I was even conceived in my mother's womb. I don't know about you, but I like to think about that God. That God that we haven't seen. We don't really know His ways. We only comprehend what we can read in the Bible and understand through the revelation of the Spirit through His Word. But our God is a great God. When I think of the galaxies, when I think of they're talking about finding another black hole in the depths of that black hole, our best telescopes can't even reach into some of the depths of how far the stars go. I'm talking millions and millions and millions of light years away. And our God spoke all of that into existence. Our God created the heavens and the earth and all that ever was made and that which we can only see was made by Him and for Him. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He was not a created being. He was from the beginning. And brothers, there was a plan before the beginning where He was to be slain before the foundations of the world. The plan of God always was to come down upon this earth to save humanity from their sins. All oh, glory be to God. Aren't you glad God's got a plan? And can I tell you, it's important for us to recognize we cannot judge our life based upon the season that we're in right now because God's got some great things in store for those that love Him. Jesus knew He was going to have to come down on the earth. And can I tell you, for 30 years He was silent. We do not know much about His life for 30 years. All we have is some small portions of when He was born in a manger and when the wise man came to the house and presented him gifts then we jump forward into the gospels where he's around 12 years old and and his family is in the city for the celebrations and the feast and they find him and they left him for one day journey and they took three days to find him but they found him in the temple with the doctors and the scholars and we read about him only very very little in the gospels in that 30 year period of time but then for 30 years of silence literally 30 years of not knowing really what took place in his life what he was like when he was a teenager altogether. 
But I'm trying to get you to see that Jesus knew even at 12 years old. He said, I must be about my father's business. He knew who he was. He knew his purpose in the earth. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, God's got a purpose for you. He's got a purpose for your children. He's got his hand upon us. And he's got a plan for each and every one of our lives. Jesus was sent into this world to die upon the cross. It wasn't by accident. It wasn't by chance. He tried to tell his disciples all through his ministry for the three and a half years that he walked the earth in his ministry, going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. We can see the miracles. We can see the healings. We can see him casting out demons. We can see him praying for the sick. We can see Him multiplying the bread and the fishes. We can see all the miraculous things that our Lord did. But all through it all, He constantly told His disciples, I have come for one purpose, and that was to die for all of humanity upon an old rugged cross. Listen to me. We need to get back to preaching to this generation the simplicity of the Gospel that there was a man that came down from heaven And His name is Jesus. And He came to save this world from their sins. He was born of a virgin. That makes me happy because that in itself, His introduction to the world wasn't brothers and sisters brought in by kings and and all types of fancy array. He was born in a manger. Can you say man? He was the lowly Savior. Oh, He should have been born in a palace. He should have had all the best doctors all around him no but he's showing you his character that he humbled himself and came into this world in the poverty of being born in a manger do you see the lowly jesus he came to this earth to die for you and for me he was to be made sin for us he took up on the sins of all humanity And when we look at Him, the Bible says, and Isaiah records, that when we look at Him, He is no one to be desired. When they began to beat Him, taking Him from the Garden of Gethsemane, that's when the beating and the blood started to spill. I know that many movie creators have tried to do their best to try to make it up. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says that literally we could not even recognize if you knew him in the physical before all of the beatings and all of the suffering and the tearing and all of the torment that they put him through. You wouldn't even recognize who he was. You ever seen someone been beaten so bad that they weren't even recognizable? That's a picture of what he took upon himself. The Bible says he knew no sin in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. He was sinless that that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Can I tell you every stripe, every beat, every time they took those cat of nine tails and raped them across his back. Can you imagine being beaten? Cat of nine tails usually made out of leather, they say. Some had chain. Pieces of sharp stone and metal and glass were tied so tightly to the leather so when it goes into your back, it sticks in, and then they rip it out of there. So it literally pulls the flesh right from your body. And not just one time, not just two times, not just three times. He took one stripe. He took another stripe. He took a Another stripe. He took another stripe. Each time the blood was flowing from his back and from his shoulders and from his legs. And each time he's wincing in pain. We want to paint a pretty picture of Jesus that has a little blood trickling down. But I'm telling you, he was like a sheep 
that was ready for the slaughter. They were getting ready to do all they could do to my Lord and my Savior. You wouldn't even recognize who he was because they beat him so much. And I'm talking, they beat him again and again and again. You ain't hearing me. I'm talking 39 times. It almost makes you go insane. Okay, it's enough. Just stop. No, it's enough. No, but the Bible says that it pleased the Father to bruise Him and to see Him beaten. Oh, you didn't hear me. I'm talking about the love of God. Why did He die upon the cross? Why was He bruised? Why was He beaten? Why was all of that taking place to Him? Because He became our sin for us and the wages of our sin is death aren't you thankful today listen we need a savior we need a savior and there's no other savior but the lord jesus christ there is no one else that can wash away your sin but jesus christ he is the one that paid the price upon the cross amen he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised because of our iniquities but by his stripes by all the beating, by all of the suffering, uh, by the 39 stripes that He took, it was because, brothers and sisters, He was bringing forth through that healing, deliverance. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Amen. There was a plan of God. Can I tell you, somebody said, no pain, no gain. And that's what we see a picture of, is He was willing to suffer for you and for me. He was willing to bleed and die for our sin, for our transgression. Can I tell you, if you've got sickness in your body today, there's a stripe for diabetes. There's a stripe for cancer. There's a stripe for kidney disease, for blood disease. There's a stripe for heart disease. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe you've got arthritis. Maybe you've got some type of mental problem. I don't know what your condition is. There's so many sicknesses and diseases today we've lost count. But brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that the whole reason that He took those stripes, He was wounded for our transgressions, He was bruised for our iniquity, and by His stripes, we brothers and sisters have healing that is available to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't believe it's the will of God that God wants to see us sick. Many in our church, not just here, but in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, are sick amongst us. Why aren't we being healed? I've asked myself this when I've been afflicted. Why am I not receiving healing? What's stopping you from receiving your healing? Let me help you this morning. Can I tell you that He is our Jehovah Rapha? How many of us knows what that means? The God who heals. He is our healer. Can you say amen? Matthew went on to tell as he witnessed firsthand the ministry of Christ. Jesus went about in Matthew 4 and 23. Listen to the description of Matthew. Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And here it is. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Can I tell you that God will even heal sinners? Somebody said, well, I'm just not... Listen, there's been testimonies of people that didn't even know Christ as their Savior, and He's a merciful God. When He took the sin upon Himself and became sin for us, He took it all upon Himself for all of humanity. We don't deserve healing. We don't deserve deliverance. We don't deserve anything that He died for. 
But oh, He's a merciful God. Aren't you glad that He is a gracious God? He's long-suffering and He's willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The whole reason, brothers and sisters, that He came to this earth was to bring salvation to all of humanity. He came to bring deliverance. Ah, He came to open up the blinded eyes and set the captives free. It was by the anointing that was upon His life through His three and a half years in ministry that he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Can I tell you, healing is the will of God for us. Deliverance is the will of God for us. Oh, but can I tell you, we need to see it again because our nation needs healing. Our churches need healing. Our government needs healing. And that there's ever been a time we need to embrace the promises of God through Isaiah 53 and all through the Word of God. We need to hold true to the promises of God and say, by His stripes, I have been healed. We need to hold true to these promises and believe them because if you do not believe them, you will never receive them. Faith is what moves God. He healed all manner of disease among the people. In verse 24, Matthew 4 and 24, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with diverse, that means many different types of diseases, I'm telling you, that's what sin has done. It's brought a curse upon all of humanity. It brings sickness. It brings disease. Oh, brothers and sisters, there's one thing I don't like seeing, and that is people dying of sickness and disease. But glory be to God, I'm here to tell you that Jesus oh, took some stripes for all of humanity. He is the one that has provided healing for all manner of sickness, diverse diseases. The Bible says... That they were tormented. Amen. And those that were possessed with devils, those which were lunatics, those that weren't right in their minds, all those that had the palsy, the Bible says He healed every one of them. I sometimes think we forget that He is a healer. He is a deliverer. And we just grow in our Christian walk getting used to the pain, getting used to the suffering. We've learned to live with it. And we really make no effort in our time of prayer to pray through until the healing comes. There comes a time when even doctors will say, hey, it's all in the hands of God now. Have you ever been there before? Yeah. You know some people don't want to be healed because it gives them an excuse. I'm talking about coming to a place where we have something available to us i believe that healing is available but we are not possessing it by faith i've asked the lord lord why am i healed of this why am i healed of this why i haven't received this and the problem is is that we don't seek him and pray until the answer comes remember when lazarus was sick unto death and i like what the bible says he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God. I want you to see this. That everything He did was for us. He died for me and for you. He took the stripes for me and for you. For our. For our. In other words, you. Us. We. He was bruised for our. That makes it personal. I said, that makes it personal. Aren't you glad that the old songwriter said when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. That might not get you excited, but that makes me happy. The God of all creation would think about little old me. Who are we? We're nobodies. But oh, when I was on the cross, he <laughs> had me on his mind. I don't know about you, but glory be to God, that makes my heart rejoice to know that my Savior, his eyes are upon the sparrow and I know that he's watching me. His eyes are upon me. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Can I tell you many are the afflictions of the righteous 
people of God, but God delivers us out of all of our troubles because He sees where we're at and He knows what we're going through and He cares and He knows that we, brothers and sisters, need to be healed and delivered. We need healing today.